Now upon reading this problem, you'll see that it is an investment problem, but technically if you think about it, we're taking our money and investing it in two different banks, or we're mixing it up into two different banks. So I'm going to treat this as a mixture problem. And instead of using test tubes, I'm going to use little bank buildings here. And when you put money in the bank, you make money cha -ching, over there on the right hand side. So here we go. The amount invested in fund A is three times as much invested in fund B. We don't know the amount going in each of these, but we know the first one will be three times larger. So here's going to be 3x and then x. And maybe I should have labeled that this is A and this is B right there. Fund A returned a 4% profit, so I'm going to put a 4% at the top there. Fund B a 6% profit. Okay, so everything seems to have a place here so far. How much did she invest in fund A if the total profits from the two funds together is $1,080? Okay, this one's a little bit different. Notice that on the top right, this 1,080 is not a percentage like the 4 and the 6%. This right here is a total amount of interest. And when there is a total amount of interest, instead of going top times bottom plus top times bottom equals top times bottom, we're just going to stop right up there at the top right when we see the total. So here we go. We're going to have 4%. I'm going to write that as 0.04 times 3x plus 0.06 times x equals 1080 0.00. Now, in the first couple problems involving percentage, was we had percents in all three positions, and I really didn't have to pay attention to the decimals. But because I don't have a percentage in the top right, and we're not dealing with the same thing on the left side of the equation as we are on the right, I need those decimals because I'm going to need to multiply through by 100 to clear the decimals and create a much larger number here on the right. And if I didn't do so, this would get all messed up. Just trust me on this one. So I'm going to have 4 times 3x, which is 12x, plus 6x is equal to 108,000. Adding 12 and 6 together, we find we get 18x equals 108,000. And dividing through by 18, we find that x will equal $6,000. Now, x is at the 6%. If you look at our picture up above, so I'm going to write 6% here. And 3x will be $18,000 and that is what's being invested at 4%. Now, we don't want to just stop and say, oh, I got my answer once I got that X of $6,000, because this problem was asking how much it was invested in fund A, and that was actually the 4% uh, account, and therefore 18,000 would be the solution to this problem. Let's take a look at another investment problem, and again, I'm going to draw my little bank buildings that I'm going to use to represent this. And Amanda has borrowed $6,000 from two sources. Now, not $6,000 from either of these banks, but that's kind of a total value. So I'm going to put that amount down here on the bottom right. Her parents and a credit union. I'll put a little P right here for parents, C for credit union right next to that other bank building. Her parents charged 3% simple interest. 0.03 or 3%, and uh, the credit in union was 8%, 0.08. After one year, she paid $255 in interest. That is a total value, so I'm going to write that at the top right. That's 255. Um, how much did she borrow from each source? Ooh, I'm probably going to want to use P for parents and C for credit union as the two variables there. So, okay, let's go through and write our equations. And I notice here I've got decimals on the left, so I'm going to multiply through by 100 in both those positions. Think of this 255 as having a 0, .00 on it. And basically, I've just multiplied through by 100 on each side. So here we go. Top times bottom, 3p, plus top times bottom, 8c, is equal to 
Wow, that's a total up there, isn't it? That's a total amount of interest. So let's stop there, 25,500. Now I've got two variables involved. I need my second equation, which I get from the bottom of this table. P plus C equals 6,000. P plus C equals 6,000. And that is the system that we're going to begin with, a system of equations. Now, I've got two variables here, and I'd like to eliminate one of them. And I'd like to have a minus 3 right there in front of the P so I can add down and cancel out the P's. So I'm going to keep the first equation as is, and I'm going to multiply that second equation through by negative 3. My first equation stays 3P plus 8C is equal to 25,500. And the second equation becomes negative 3p minus 3c is equal to negative 18,000. Adding down, we've canceled out the p's by design. And we will have left 5c is equal to $7,500. And if we divide through by 5, we now have $1,500. That will be from the credit union. And we need to find P, parents. I do know from up above, P plus C together adds up to 6,000. So let's take the 1,500 away and find out that $4,500 was borrowed from parents.